This is the newest Positron printer. Well, not really. This is a redesigned version of the original Positron made by Kralin 3D, as well as integrating features from the Positron LT printer. In the first video I released, I briefly introduced the printer and received an overwhelming amount of positive feedback and support from the 3D printing community. Since then, people have begun to build their own Journeymaker printer. These are just a few of the printers made by members within our Discord server. In this video, I wanted to address some of the questions that were asked in the previous video. I'm going to explain some of the design features of this printer, and I highly recommend you watch Creelan's video, the creator of the Positron, as he explained the full design process involved in creating this very unique printer. So why does the Journey Maker exist? Well, I came across the Positron project back when Kralin released his first video. I instantly loved the project and wanted to build my own. Unfortunately, it was rather difficult and expensive, one of the biggest setbacks being the CNC parts. The bill of materials for their printer claimed the total cost to be around 540 US dollars, but this does not include the price of machining the metal parts as well as electrical components needed to build this. If you've ever tried to source a one-off part from a local CNC shop, it's rather pricey. That is, if you can even get a quote since most CNC shops won't take that job. Even on Zometry, the pricing was expensive when you factor in the cost for all the metal parts. With Journeymaker, we have made the CNC parts a full kit that is available on our website for a fraction of the cost that the V3 parts are. I also came to realize that this project was left slightly unfinished. Kralin did an amazing job inventing and designing this printer, but it had many flaws. The community has since worked together to try and fix some of the issues, and at the time, not a lot was achieved. I initially started by playing around with the Positron V3 CAD and seeing if I could create a simpler kinematic system for the gantry. This didn't go very far. As I came close to, to the end of my university degree, I had an opportunity to continue this project as my engineering capstone project. This is where I set out to redesign the Positron printer from scratch to create a simpler assembly, cheaper, and more accessible option within the Positron community. The biggest question of all time related to this printer, and I get asked this question almost every time someone new sees it, the comments in the last video were also filled with people asking, won't gravity cause the part to fall off while printing? The answer is no. Well, yes, but not when printing. The bed used on the Positron printer is borosilicate glass with heating strips. When the filament is extruded from the nozzle and comes in contact with the heated glass, it creates a very strong bond. So as long as the printer has, a, has good leveling, the filament has no problem sticking. It's actually very difficult to remove apart while the glass is still hot. The bed being used in the video is ITO glass, which in short makes it makes the glass electrically conductive, removing the need for the heated strips. But as of right now, this type of heated bed is rather experimental and does not have a reliable manufacturer. So most of the printers use heated strips. Another known problem with this printer is the magnetic connector for the bed. And let me explain why. The original May connector design, the way that it would work is that you would have to put the, the magnetic connector part through the printed part, and then you would have to solder onto it. When you assemble this, the um, to get it to stay onto the Z axis, you would have the wires that would go through here. So you'd have to pull the wires out a bit, and then you would have to put these um, screws in through here. Imagine that these wires are going through into out of this side. The challenge that would happen is that then the wires get compressed here and you're stuck trying to force this part to go into place and have the wires come out through the top. With the new design, what we have is uh, an edge connector. So uh, this is just like, um, almost like a USB stick that you'd plug into here. You might have seen it with like RAM cards or whatever. And uh, with this design, it uses two PCBs that go on top of each other. So this PCB would be soldered to this one through these holes here. And then the connector would go into the pins at the top. Uh, so these would lay on flat onto here with the, the connector actually would be soldered in. And then this part would go through. 
and then you would have your connections that would solder onto here. And when all finished and done, it should look something like this. This brings us to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay offers high quality and reliable PCB prototyping with fast delivery. In addition, they offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. For the edge connector seen in this video, I ordered those PCBs from them and they turned out to be great. If you are also working on a project of your own, PCBWay has you covered. Click the link in the description below and you can check out their services. The second most common question asked is why does the printer print upside down? Well, this has to do with Kralin's design process. When trying to figure out how to make the printer portable, he explored many different design concepts. His conclusion was to make it a foldable printer. He found that other people have tried this concept before, and with their designs, they would fold the Z-axis of a bed slinger. It was discovered that by reversing this and having the tool head on the base of the printer, it could be lightweight and have a lower center of gravity. Back to the main question of can you print upside down, well this is nothing new and other people have tried this before. If you flip any FDM printer upside down, it should print just fine. This is because the layers are being adhered together before there's any time for it to fall. So why should the Positron printer you build be Journey Maker? Well, because it was designed in such a way that it can be easily modded with other and future Positron variants. It is easy to swap out components such as the tool head and extruder, as well as many other features with little to no redesign needed. Our Discord community has already begun to create improvements and modifications to this design. The printer is also the easiest and cheapest to build. In the last video, JourneyMaker was made available open source, but without the CAD being included. As of right now, the step model for this printer has been released on our GitHub page. All custom parts for this printer can be found on our website voxelite.com, as well as an easy to comprehend bill of materials and full build guide that we are actively updating. And for a limited time, we are selling a Positron carrying case that is compatible with all Positron variants. If you have or plan to build a Positron printer, this is a great alternative to a filament box for transporting your printer. Link in the description below. We would love for anyone interested in this printer to come join our Discord server. We have an active community that has been extremely helpful towards this project. Thank you guys, and I hope to see more people join us there. Stay tuned for the next video where I will be doing a full build for Journeymaker.